I'm going to take you through my journey to let you know that I'm not speaking from ignorance, but I'm speaking from my own experience of the Western culture and the Western church, first beginning with the papal church in which I was brought up. I stopped, looked closely at each denomination and saw that there was nothing within except the bones of past inhabitants. So I moved on. A nice neighbor lady, older, uh, was hosting a Bible study that was given by an African missionary who was on furlough. She led me along with several others in our neighborhood among the children into a confession of sin in our simple way and into accepting the Lord Jesus into our hearts. I remember walking out that day. The grass was greener. The sky was bluer. Everything was right with the world. I sensed even the angels dancing. So this began my experience with walking in Christ and with him. I was in a Catholic family, however. This was allowed by the Lord and in his providence so that I would go and search for him outside the context of a comfortable family situation. My heavenly father would be my father and the Lord's mother would be my mother. And we must understand something about the Roman Catholic Church. Because they must go to the church first, as I understood later in life while studying this, our prayers were never quite enough. Uh, we had to go to a priest and get proper prayers. Our prayers would go as far as the ceiling. And if we thought that we could live a holy life, it was seen as, uh, as a delusional. Only the saints could do this. And you could only be a saint when you went to heaven, into high school, I knew I wanted to be a missionary. The missionary lady that had led me to the Lord had also given me that desire to serve the African people in particular. So I wanted to enter the convent, which was the way in a Catholic family that you served the Lord as a missionary. Like Abraham, I knew I had to leave family and friends and also my home country in order to follow Christ. I didn't know much about the order that I was going into. All I knew is that they were teachers and that it was possible, in some cases, to be a missionary with this order. However, only after I got into the order did I understand that they followed the rule of the Jesuits the Jesuits are very strong in philosophy. Philosophy is at the heart of the Roman Catholic Church. We learned Aristotle, Aquinas, Augustine as the church father who alone was taught to us. He fit in very well with the other philosophers. He used Aristotle himself and Plato for some of his ideas of the creation, for instance, and our own relationship with God, which was not possible in this philosophy. In early spring, I was reading uh, about John the Baptist in one of the Gospels. I think it was St. Mark. He was pointing to the Lord saying, I baptize with water. He, pointing to Christ, he it is who will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and in fire. And I was prompted by the Holy Spirit to pray. So I said, Lord Jesus, what is this Holy Spirit baptism? Please baptize me in the Holy Spirit. And before I got the words out, this mighty person lifted me from my seat in the library. Thankfully, no one was around me. and 
I was so astonished, I kind of drew back. And of course, he is such a gentle person. He withdraws if we sense fear uh, because of the power. That was my first taste of the coming of the Holy Spirit. And my eyes were opened from that time. I saw things in scripture from the Holy Spirit I would not have seen otherwise. And I knew within my heart of hearts that I would leave eventually the Catholic Church and the convent and would uh, find my way outside the church following the Lord. This search for truth always trumped the denomination I was in because I was following God no matter where it led. I often wondered in the philosophical studies I was involved in, why, first of all, we weren't getting theology, we were getting philosophy. It seems strange. The mind of the Catholic Church is extremely rational. Vatican II was going on. The Jesuits were at the forefront of Vatican II. They were bringing in teachers that were New Age teachers, like Teilhard de Chardin. The Lord wanted me to know these things. So I was also exposed to liberation theology at this time. The uh, teachings of the very radical Latin American church uh, was popular among our young university students who were novices. Then philosophy started stripping away my faith. You had Boltman presenting the gospel as a myth. These worst of the Protestant liberal theologians were brought into the, the Roman church. church since they had nothing else. They didn't have their own theology. So it's kind of strange. Uh, the worst kind of theology came in at the worst time when my faith was stripped away. I finally discovered people like Kierkegaard, people like um, Blaise Pascal, because my French major by then had taken on and I, and I was ready to go ahead in French studies. And also Gabriel Marcel, who was a preeminent Christian existentialist. Existentialism seemed to me to be the only real way to live in the now and relate to God and to others in a real, authentic, as it's called, way. And indeed, I found out later, orthodoxy uses an existential approach, of course, far predating existentialism. Existentialism keyed in to the early Christian church who were eyewitnesses of this ever-present, now, Savior, who gave us his Holy Spirit to be present with us. At this point, I left the convent and the church. Divine Providence uses these things. I needed every bit of that philosophical training uh, in order to have vocabulary to fight of what was going to be coming into the Pentecostal movement later.